This conference will now be recorded. So, hi everyone, good morning. So today in OSB session, we will discuss uh, we will discuss a new example, a new web service. Let's see. Uh, in the previous sessions, we discussed about a small business logic that is addition of two numbers, addition addition web service and subtraction web service. Two different web services we designed, right? So in the addition web service, we used the replace action and we designed the transformation by using X query, X query file. Okay. We use the transformation by using X query file. In the subtraction web service, we we designed the web server, we designed the transformation by using XSLT resource. Okay, XSLT file. So we designed two different transformations. One is X query, one is XSLT. I want to show you the third option. In in OSB, we have third option uh, that is called X query as expression. Okay, so whenever in OSB, if you want to do some data transformation, we have three options X query, number two, XSLT, and number three, X query as expression. X query as expression. I, I will tell you the difference. What is the difference uh, between X query, XSLT, and X query as expression? So it's very simple, guys. When you are using X query and XSLT in a transformation, when you are using X query or XSLT in a transformation, transformation will take care how to design the target structure. Let me open X query and XSLT file. If you see this, if you see this, here in the X query file, the target structure is already defined, already defined. In this transformation, what we are doing, what is the runtime data we want to keep in the target variable or the target XML that we are passing here. Okay, we are we are just passing the structure, whatever is required, whatever is required. Okay, I mean, we are passing the data, runtime data, suppose the result, how you calculate the result, OSB in one uh, plus OSB in two. It's an expression, right? It's an expression you are passing to result element, but result element you are not constructing. That element format, it is already, this transformation file is already constructing the format. Response schema is the root element, operation name and result. The structure is constructed by your X query file. Similar thing happened in XSLT as well. In XSLT as well, the, the target structure is defined. It is already well defined. Okay, you just passing the data. You are not constructing the format. You are not constructing the format, you are passing the data and your XSLT or X query file will take care of construction of output XML structure. Okay, any question here? Any question? By using XSLT or X query, the target structure will be constructed. The target XML structure will be constructed based on the XSD. And our responsibility is we need to configure the runtime data, what should be populated in the target XML. Okay, this is, the, we can do the same thing in X query and XSLT. But if you use the third mechanism, third mechanism, X query as expression, here we need to take care how to build the target structure. Target structure will not be auto-generated we need to build it manually as a developer at the time of writing the code we need to define what elements we want what is the structure we want i mean what is the complex element what is the simple element everything we need to define in the code and also we need to define the expressions to pass the values what is the value should be populated in the xml element even that we need to take care okay so in xslt and x query Target structure, target structure depends on target XML, let me say XML structure depends on XSD, okay, and it is transformation file will populate required XML structure. Okay, the same thing for XSLT as well. 
But these are two different languages. XQuery is a different language. XSLT is a different language. But if you go to the third one, XQuery as expression, developer need to populate output structure for the transformation along with along with runtime data runtime data okay any questions as of now i will i will give a break here for one two minutes let me know if you have any questions <clears throat> no question from anyone no, sir. Yeah. no question, sir? Okay. Fine. So, I want to show you this example. I want to show you how to use XQuery as expression in our OSB project. Everything is same except the transformation. We did addition of two numbers, subtraction of two numbers. Now, I want to show you a third example, multiplication of two numbers. But here, I'm not going to use XQuery, XQuery resource file or XSLT resource file. Okay, I want to use something called XQuery as expression. XQuery as expression. And I want to show you little difference uh, in this example. In OSB, this is one additional feature. This is an additional feature in OSB. You can design your program. You can develop your program. Of course, in JDeveloper, of course, in JDeveloper, and you can deploy the program into your OSB server through SB console. Okay. I want to show you a few different things. Number one, the deployment. I want to show you some deployment. And I want to show you uh, how to develop OSB code in service bus console. Console. Directly in the console, you can do the program. Okay. And I want to show you export import options okay so this time reverse will we earlier we saw how to do import export i mean export import uh, that is j developer to service bus console but i today i want to show you in the reverse way uh, service bus console to service bus console to j developer Okay, reverse uh, options okay right let me show you the first one the deployment see how we are doing the deployment as of now as of now what we are doing is we are exporting the jars here we are exporting the jar with all the required files and we go to service bus console we go to service bus console and create a session and we import the jar this is the deployment method we are following this is the standard deployment method for osb in any project, we use this deployment method. Okay. I mean, what we do? Go to JDeveloper, export all the required files, export all the required files, create a jar on your desktop or some other location, and then go to Service Bus Console. And you need to import the jar into Service Bus Console in an active session. And then you need to save the session and close the session. Then the changes will be reflected in Service Bus. Okay. But there is another option as well, like SOA, you can also deploy your OSB program by using deployment profile. This is the deployment profile, right? You can also deploy your OSB code by using deployment profile. But in this approach, what happened? Uh, the entire OSB project will be deployed. Suppose if you select this option, okay, you need to take the application server connection and override modules of the same name, if any modules with the same name. I mean, already I have common arithmetic project in my service bus console, right? So I want to override it, okay? Just say next. And then if you click finish button, the entire OSB project will be deployed. It's not just a specific file or a specific document. So this, this approach will deploy the entire OSB project. If you see the deployment finished, it deployed everything all the files in your OSB project got deployed. Okay. Any questions as of now? Any questions? No? Okay. So here, see, this is your deployment profile. If you want to edit the deployment profile, you can come to this navigation. 
okay edit it you know this right uh, how to open this property i mean simply right click on your project go to project properties here go to deployment option you can see the deployment profile osb deployment profile it's a default deployment profile comes along with your project creation when you create the osb project it will be generated you can edit this not able to edit okay it's not allowing us to edit uh, let me check why it is not okay anyway you can you can if you want you can create a new deployment profile as well if you really want but ideally this is enough to deploy the osp project okay like every soa project has this feature right but in 11g we don't use j developer uh, in 11g osb we use eclipse there we don't have this option at all we don't have a direct osb project deployment option like this okay so we need to select the required files and deploy okay done this is one a small small feature uh, which is introduced in 12c uh, similar to your SOA deployment but that's not uh, suggestible to do the deployment approach uh, i saw everywhere we we do this approach i mean export the jar with all the required files and deploy okay even though it's a new feature introduced in 12c but uh, uh, not widely used okay right this is one thing so now what i want to do i want to develop a multiplication web service of course you can do the multiplication web service by the, by creating one proxy service one pipeline in the j developer and we thought we don't want to use xslt and xquery in this multiplication logic right we want to use xquery by example for that we don't need any transformation file but we need replace action for sure okay uh, so what i want to do is i want to show you how to design the web service in sb console directly in sb console okay right let me start the program so i want to show you multiplication web service here go to your service bus console first you need to create the session you need to start the session okay just click on the create button you need to create session so now i started one session in my service bus console i want to design one proxy service just click on the proxy service folder okay just click on the proxy service folder here you can see uh, one new proxy we want right where is the option okay here you can see resource let's create the resource i mean version to version little bit navigation will change guys the navigation uh, the options either left side right side somewhere it will it will roll okay so here we have an option uh, create resource okay you can see an option called resource just click on the resource let's see okay so what do you want to create i want to create a proxy service just select the proxy service see see there are different options what you want to create you want to create interface interface is nothing but visible you want to create transformation file so different options we have now i want to create a proxy service proxy service so i just selected proxy service okay so what kind of proxy service it is it soap service or any other type of service so right now we want to design the soap service right i'm just selecting soap service okay say okay to design the soap service we need a visitor we need a visitor correct so anyway already we have a visitor under visitor under visitor folder i am going to reuse it uh, so here it is asking create proxy service i will say this is multiplication underscore ps this is multiplication proxy service and you need to browse the visitor i already have a visitor handy with me just browse it um, search if you click search button it will show you all the visitors in your service bus console okay uh, i will select common arithmetic visitor say okay done visitor browsed visitor browsed and the port type also browsed okay and then I, you do you want to generate the pipeline yes i want to generate the pipeline you can give proper meaningful naming convention i said multiplication underscore pipeline simply go to next button this is the next button okay so it is asking for the endpoint i'm okay with the default endpoint otherwise you you if you want to follow any naming convention in this endpoint is your choice you can make any endpoint okay let me click on the create button once you click on the create button it will create one pipeline file 
one proxy file two things done just go to your uh, proxy service folder see this is still running this is still running okay so we got the multiplication proxy let me expand the folder see here multiplication proxy and multiplication pipeline okay uh, let's see if i can can i move this to another folder i just selected the folder and do we have an option to move multiplication pipeline i need an option to move this okay i don't see the right option here can i drag this okay i'm trying to drag it see i'm trying to drag this file into pipeline folder so before doing that close the file it is, it is always suggestible to close everything close everything then move the file let's see if it can move no it's not okay fine it's not moving anyway let's open the pipeline file and concentrate on the business logic we want to do the multiplication business logic here right so i just open the pipeline i just open the pipeline here you can see the pipeline uh, all the settings of the pipeline anyway we want to design some business logic in the pipeline you can go to the pipeline pipeline icon see this is the pipeline icon if you click on it it will open a pipeline in edit mode okay so this this is your pipeline i mean whatever you see in your j developer j developer however you have the pipeline this is the file this is the pipeline i i opened in my sb console and this is the root node start node you can say start node or root node so whatever logic you want you can add it let me say i want to add add pipeline pair i add pipeline pair is a node right this is the one so what we want inside the pipeline file we want one pipeline pair node under that we we will have a request pipeline and response pipeline and within the request pipeline we need to configure the replace action within the replace action instead of x query or uh, x query resource or xslt resource i want to go with x query expression okay let's see that so here what i need to do just uh, just simply left click on the start node it will show you different options what node you want to configure i want to go with add pipeline pair just simply say pipeline pair so here you can see request pipeline and response pipeline whichever you want just simply left click on it left click on it and you can see add stays okay simply select the add stays once you select stays node we got a stays node here observe in this stays node edit stays i want to design the logic inside this edit stays done okay so now you can see inside stays we are inside stays see this is the stays node right inside stays whatever ac actions you want to configure you can add here it is showing add an action we are inside stays anything you want to add you can add here so i want to add an action there are different actions so i want to use replace action this these are all the message processing okay so these are all the message processing actions i want to use replace action just go with replace action all same settings you can see here guys in jdeveloper whatever settings you see for replace action everything is same here everything is same here so you can go for expression when you go for expression you can go for x query text the x query text is nothing but x query as expression okay x query resource xslt all options what you see in the j developer all options what you see in the j developer everything you can see in sb console as well okay mainly these three options xslt x query expression so in the current example i don't want to go for x query resource or xslt resource i want to go to x query text that nothing but it is also called as x query as expression so that means in x query as expression we don't use any transformation file any resource we we need to build the required target xml structure we need to build our own so if i say abc 
okay whatever structure i want i can build so here i want some data 1 2 3 4 5 so if i want this as my target structure i need to write the xml here okay whatever the xml you are expecting as output whatever the xml structure with your complex elements and simple elements and attributes whatever structure you are expecting you need to build it you, know, you should not depend on a transformation file like x query or xsrt okay you need to build the structure okay now so what is the expected structure in a uh, multiplication output see if you see the visual this is the request we are expecting this is the request but what we are expecting this is the response structure we are expecting that means I'm expecting a complex element as a response schema. I'm expecting an operation name. I'm expecting sub elements, two simple elements. They are operation name, result. So total three elements I am expecting. So you need to, you need to build the structure, whatever you want. Okay. Something like this. So go to your OSB response schema. I want, this is the complex element under this. Under this, we want operation name, operation name, which also contains a close tag, and then result, result. So whatever XML structure, it may be just a simple element, it may be collection of simple elements, whatever structure you want, you need to build it by your own and it must be a valid XML guys. It must be a valid XML. How you can make valid XML? You need the target namespace. You need the target namespace of your XSD. You need the target namespace of your XSD. Use it as namespace. The way how we build the XML, right? We know how we build the XML. I will say XS is my qualifier. Okay, you can give anything output. Let's say output is my qualifier out. I will say out colon. You need to prefix this qualifier everywhere. So guys, to understand this, first you should know how to write a valid XML. We discussed, we, we, we had a lot of discussion on this valid XML, right? How to build a valid XML and well-formed XML. Okay, done. So I prepared the structure, whichever I want. I prepared the structure, whichever I want. Is it clear? Okay. So now, how to populate the data? We, we need to populate the data as well, correct? How to populate the data? So what we need to do, operation name. Operation name, I want a static string. So I will hard code it, multiplication. It's a static string I want. But result is not static. Result, result field value will vary according to your input. Let's say input is 10 and 20. So the result will be 10 into 20, correct? whatever the result 10 into 20 that we need to copy here suppose let's say your input is uh, 2 and 4 so the result will be 2 into 4 so it's not static data it's a runtime data dynamic data okay so you need to write an expression here it's an expression we need to perform multiplication of two numbers depends on the input depends on the input so expression you need to write within curly braces Okay, if it is static data, you want to populate static data, simply type the data. But if you want to populate runtime data and an expression, it is an expression, then you need to populate it by using curly braces. Okay, so how to populate this, how we will get the result? It depends on input. In input, see this is the input structure, right? This is the input structure and I will show you one example as well. So let's say this is our input XML. This is our input XML. This is our input XML, which is following XSD. This is the XSD request schema, OSB in one, OSB in two. By following this XSD, this is the input XML we need to pass. Okay. So once once we supply an input XML to OSB prox, uh, pipeline file, so your input XML will be stored into body variable. We know this. Once your input XML is stored into body variable, so your XML looks like this. It will be appended with the body tag. Okay. Now, now what we want, I want to multiply the data. I want to multiply the data OSB in one 
in 2, OSB in 2. Okay, these two elements I want to multiply. These two elements, correct? So how we can how we can read the data of OSB in 1? How we can read the data of OSB in 2? By using XPath. Okay, so how to write XPath? Dollar body. So variable name dollar body slash you need to you need the data i mean request schema slash osb in one we want text correct text we want text into into again what is the second element dollar body slash request schema request schema okay slash osb in two osb in two this is the expression we want to build is it clear this is the expression we want to build okay the first element and the second element both the data we want to multiply both the data we want to multiply hope you understand the x path how we build the x path we already know how to write an XPath for one element. And here we are doing multiplication of two elements. Okay. This is the expression you need to execute to multiply, multiply two elements from input variable. Okay. Let's go to your SB console. See here. <clears throat> you can see the variable structure. If you want, you can see the variable structure here. Go to the body. Okay, here you can see your body variable request format and response format. Request format and response format. So our data, our input data is request format. You can do the multiplication here. Select the OSB in one. Okay. Simply drag drop within the curly braces. Oh, why it is wrong? It's not generating the expression. Oh my God. Okay, uh, it is not generating the expression. Why? Okay, you can see here, bottom you can see this guys. Okay, once you select this, the same X path uh, is visible. See, whatever X path we build in the notepad, you can see that whatever the XPath we built in the notepad, the same expression, the same XPath expression you can see. Okay, so this is the expression to, a, to access your to access your element. You can copy it or you can type it. Anything is fine. You can copy it. Okay, we want text. We want text. Use the text function. Multiplication into, into. Okay, what is the second element? Select the second element. You can see the expression here, second element expression. You can copy the property. Okay. And then, where is it? It is copied here. Place it at the right location. Slash text function. So now what happened? So we are reading the expression. We are reading the expression from the input variable. This is the XPath to read the data from input variable into second element from input variable is it clear everybody okay simply click on save button so this is how i mean see observe here i'm not using an xql x query file or xslt file whatever the xml structure we want we need to build it we need to build it as a developer and then we need to populate the data with the proper expressions okay just simply click save button okay Done. So this expression is ready. We are not browsing any transformation, but we build the structure, whatever we want. Remaining options are same. So where you want to copy your data? I want to copy the data. I mean, I want to replace my body variable, which is already contains input data, input XML. I want to replace it with the, with the transformation data, whatever data generated in this transformation that I want to replace here. And you want to go with the I just want to replace the entire variable so i say dot replace the root element and i want to replace the node content because i'm using dot here right dot means body tag capital b body tag 
I want to replace the body tag, but I don't want to replace the entire tag. I want to replace the tag node content, node content. Okay, this we already discussed in last two sessions. Click Save button. That's it. So we are ready with a stage action with all required transformation done. Now activate your session. Your multiplication pipeline is ready. Just simply activate the pipeline. Some comment I added, activate. Okay, let's wait for activation. Once the activation completed, what we can do? We can uh, test our multiplication web service either by using service bus uh, test console or we can use SOAP UI and test it. Okay, let's see. We got this is activated, session activated. Now go to multiplication proxy service. Multiplication proxy service, you can get the endpoint. You can get the endpoint of your multiplication proxy service by using this endpoint. You can test your program. HTTP colon slash slash. You need to use the host name, proper host name, colon seven one zero one, and paste your endpoint. Question mark visual. So this is the concrete visual of your OSB project. Go to your uh, SOAP UI. Okay, you can test this multiplication proxy. Okay. okay, done. Save this project. It is a good practice. Always save your SOAP UI project before you do any other changes. Go to my desktop, SOAP UI folder. Okay, done. Now, test your OSB project. I will say 10 and 20, 10 and 20. Okay, see here, we got the output, whatever we are expecting. This is the XML we generated by using replace action. Multiplication, I hard coded. Multiplication, I hard coded, right? And this value is coming with the expression. Whatever expression we configured in the pipeline. Correct? In the pipeline, we have an expression. We built an expression. Stairs, view stairs. See, this is not edit mode because I'm not in the active session. I did not start the session. I just opened the pipeline. Okay. This is not in edit mode. So this is the expression I built. Okay. My expression contains a complex element and two simple elements. First simple element hard coded. Second simple element has an X path with multiplication logic. Okay. Done. So that's what executed by using your OSB project. Okay. You can also test the same project by using SB console, go to your pro proxy file. This is the proxy file. PS is proxy file. I want to test it. Okay. So here you can give whatever input you want. Two, four. Okay. Execute. Execute. You can see the response. You can see the response. Okay. Any question? Eight is the multiplication logic done. And let me show you another thing. I tested the proxy file, right? You can also test the pipeline file. Go to pipeline file, launch the test console. Uh, you can give some data here. I will say 10 and 10, 10 and 10, execute. See here, this is the request document which we submitted. This is the response document, the output. So in OSB, we have option, right? You can test the proxy file. You can test the pipeline file. You can test the transformation file as well. You, okay, you, you, you open the transformation. You can you can simply test the transformation logic. It may be X query or XSLT transformation. You can you can test it, but in SOA, we don't have that option. We have to test the entire service, but in OSB, resource by resource, you can test. Okay, and here, while you are testing the pipeline file guys when you are testing a pipeline file so pipeline file you cannot test by using soap ui pipeline file is an internal component to your osb program you cannot test pipeline file by using 
service, I mean, uh, SOAP UI or any other tool. Okay, pipeline is an internal component to OSB program that is accessible within the service bus console. You cannot access pipeline outside of your service bus. But proxy is the component which we are expo exposing to external world. That's what proxy file you can proxy file you can test by using SOAP UI. It's the external file. Okay, but you cannot test pipeline file. Pipeline file is an internal file to your OSB program that you cannot test by using SOAP UI. Okay, may I have a note. And and when you are testing pipeline file, there is a there is a feature called trace. Trace that means it will give you some information, something like your SOA instance. But it, I mean, we should not compare this with SOA instance because SOA instance is SOA instance comes with a dehydration feature. I mean, you can open the SOA instance at any point of time. Suppose today I run the SOA program, there is an instance created. That instance I can open it immediately or after one hour or after two, today. Let's say tomorrow I can open the instance or after one week I can open the instance. At any time I can open the instance. Okay. But in OSB it's not that way. But when you are testing pipeline, something like instance, it is not a, it's not at all equal to instance, guys. Okay. Something like instance, it will give you some trace. What happened in your program? See, receiving, receiving request receiving request when your pipeline receives the in, receives the input not just input it, it it receives multiple context variables body variable header variable inbound variable message id variable some set of context and predefined variables it will receive so the body variable contains our input xml body variable contains our input xml along with the body tag body tag are we good okay so you can you can get some trace minimum trace you can get i mean when you are when you have a complex logic in your osb program this trace will help you what is the first activity executed what is the second thing executed what is the data at runtime in the specific variable you can see that data here okay as of now we have very small logic right we have one stage action in, in the pipeline we have one stage action which contains a replace action which is replacing the body variable which is re which executed a logic to replace the body variable so what happened after executing the logic it contains response schema xml see initially it contains request schema xml but after transformation after transformation it can be x query it can be xslt it can be x query as expression after transformation what is the data populated in body variable see changed body variable changed body variable because we 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 replaced the data in body variable so in the body variable we modified something so it is saying changed body variable you can see the changed data here so but this trace will be will not be available if i close this test console if i close this test console this trace is not available and this trace you can get only if you test the pipeline if you test proxy service you don't get this trace okay keep it in mind Okay, if you test the proxy file, you don't get this trace. Okay, let me show you once again. If I go to proxy file, let me launch the test console. This is the proxy file. Let me test 100 and 100. See, you got the output. You got the output, but you don't see the trace here. Proxy file will not show you the trace. Okay, done. So this is one, one important feature in OSB. Okay, now, now what we did guys, we we developed a complete new OSB project. We can develop a new OSB project completely in SB console. There is no dependency on J developer. Without using J developer, you can build the entire OSB project in the SB console. You simply create the session. I mean, you need to start a session and then you can create project, you can create files, everything. Okay, suppose if you see according to the navigation, my current navigation is on all projects. Okay, it is showing only project. I can create only project. Suppose my navigation, if I click on the mouse, my mouse cursor on the common automatic project, see here it is showing you want to create a folder or resource. According to your mouse cursor location, it will show you different options. Okay, I want to create a fresh project. So what I need to do, click on all projects, click on all projects. And you can create a fresh project here, a new project altogether. You can start from scratch. 
one new project under the project you can create folders under the folders you can create all the resources what are the resources we have in uh, osb visitors proxy file pipeline file uh, <clears throat> what we can say transformation file xslt transformation xquery transformation okay any resource file or folder you can create under the project okay done so let me deactivate this discard the session okay now now our arithmetic project contains three web services addition subtraction and multiplication three web services we have right so but if you go back to jdeveloper jdeveloper still it has the old code we don't have multiplication here we don't have multiplication so how to sync if you want to sync the project which is in the sb console how you can get it to jdeveloper yes we we need to do the reverse method i mean we need to export the required files from service bus and we can import them into our jdeveloper that's it okay earlier we did the deployment process how we did the deployment process in jdeveloper we export the required jar file and import into service bus now we need to do it in the reverse way export the jar from service bus console and import it into your jdeveloper okay let's do that it's very simple process go to your service bus console uh, no need to activate any session you no need to start the session so select all projects select all projects here you can see an option called export export simply say export okay here you need to choose whatever you want you want to export the entire project or few resources i just want to go with few resources i don't want to import all projects and uh, everything okay i want to report uh, re export only resource and i don't want any dependencies to be exported i know what, what files i want to include okay i removed it remove all projects i don't want all projects simply go to arithmetic project and what we want uh, if you go to proxy service multiplication pipeline multiplication proxy that's it i want only two files okay export see we got a jar file we exported a jar file so let me copy this jar file it is under my downloads folder cut this i will paste anywhere you can you can keep this jar file anywhere let me keep this jar file on my desktop okay now go to your j developer select your osb project where you want to import the files where you want to import the files just select the project file import okay what do you want to import i want to import a service bus resource file service bus resources file say okay i have a configured jar i have a configured jar okay browse the jar file which is on my desktop simply go to sb config.jar click next see these are all the two files we have in the jar you want to see we are creating the files in our project as of now they are not available in our project now we are creating click finish so we are whatever we did in sb console that i exported and uh, i bring the jar and now i imported the jar into my j developer now my j developer code and service bus code both are same there is no difference okay so of course you want to move this pipeline file you can move this mm, refactor move it move it to pipeline folder move it to pipeline folder say okay done so pipeline move to pipeline folder of course you want to deploy redeploy this yeah you can do that let me close everything in sb bus, service bus okay i want to redeploy the code i want to redeploy the entire osb project so we need to overwrite finish so now you can start the redeployment the entire osb project i am redeploying here okay deployment finished all these files deployed all these files deployed go back to your service bus refresh your service bus console this is the refresh icon okay once you refresh see everything it's a fresh deployment it's a fresh deployment see pipeline went into pipeline folder okay proxy went into proxy folder 
something like this. So why there is a duplicate copy as well. This one not required anymore. What I will do, I will delete this. Let's see if I can delete. Delete. Okay, now I don't want a duplicate pipeline, I deleted it. Now you can see all the web services. I mean, my intention here is it is one of the feature in OSB. You can directly, you can directly design or develop your web service. Directly you can develop your web service in the SB console itself. Or you can edit any any OSB file in the SB console itself. Suppose you want to edit the transformation file. You can edit it directly here with a session. With a session. Okay. Suppose if I start the session. So this is the transformation I want to edit. Yes, you can edit it. Okay, so you can, but but here we don't have a graphical option for transformation files, especially XQuery and XSLT. You don't have graphical option. You can directly edit the file if you want. Suppose add hyphen one, something I added. Okay, it is possible you can edit any file or you can design entirely new OSB project. Okay, I'm not doing any changes. I just discarded it. Any questions from anyone? I will stop the recording.